Welcome everyone. I just wanted to make a short video here as a way of smoothing your transition into learning R with this. Of course, our online course packet. This is where you're going to spend most of your quality time learning the R commands, getting some practice, doing analyses on your own, understanding how you execute certain tasks in R. The topic of this lesson is counting in data sets to estimate probabilities, joint probabilities, conditional probabilities, that sort of thing. But of course, it can often help to have something that can smooth your transition in there. So what I've done is I've fired up my R session over here, and I'm going to work through the first maybe half of the ACLfest.R script, which I have distributed, and I'll, I'll put a link in the description below. So the first thing I want to do here is actually get the data set imported into R. So let me turn over to my R screen over here, come to the Environment tab in the upper right that you see here, and click Import Data Set. I want the first option, which is from text base. And now I just have to surf to wherever I've stored on my machine, the aclfest.csv dataset. For me, that's kind of nested in a few directories here, stat 301 data, and there it is, aclfest.csv. I click open, and now I get this little window that can allow me to import the dataset into R. I'll go through my checklist. Does the data frame have a header row? Yes, it does. And R correctly recognizes it, that the first row in the data set is actually the names of the variables, the band, the names of the festivals, et cetera, rather than a data point. So that all looks good. I'm going to go ahead and click import. And now I see in this viewer window over here, the data set. But what I don't have is actually the script, script called up. So for, to get that, I'm going to go over here to file, open, just go to open file. And now I'll find wherever it is that you've downloaded the aclfest.r script. Remember, the CSV file is the data set. The .r file is the script that collects a series of commands for actually analyzing the data. So that for me, that is in this set of directories over here. I'll surf over here to r and aclfest.r, and I'll open that up. And now I've got the script. We're ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is load the tidyverse library by... I don't even have to highlight it. I can just put my cursor on that line and hit Command Enter or Control Enter if you're on a PC. And the Tidyverse library is now ready to go and the commands in it are at my disposal. We are going to use this ACL Fest data that we read in about bands that played at a variety of major music festivals in the United States to estimate a few simple probabilities as a way of illustrating how counting, literally just counting combinations of variables, is how we get probabilities in data science. The first question we're going to answer is, for a randomly sampled band in this data set, what is the probability that that band played Lollapalooza? Well, let's count. Let's see how many bands did versus did not play at this particular festival. And the command in R that does that for us is called X-Tabs. That stands for cross-tabulate, or cross-tab for short. And the way to read this statement right here is we're telling R to cross-tabulate by, and that's what the tilde means, is by Lollapalooza in the ACL Fest data set. So that's the name of the data frame, and that's the name of the variable within the data frame. So if I put, if I put my cursor on that data frame, I'm rather on that command, and I hit Command Enter, I get a table of counts. Remember, one means yes, did play the festival, zero means no, did not. So this table of counts is telling us that 800 bands in the data set did not play Lollapalooza, and 438 did. So to estimate a probability, it really is as simple as just computing the fraction of the total number of bands, which is how many? That's 800 plus 438 right there, 1,238. Of those, 438 played Lollapalooza, so 438 divided by 1238. I'll just type that directly into the console, and that number is 0.353, or about 35%. But Handily, we can actually get R to turn this set of counts here, 800 and 438, into proportions for us. So we don't have to do the arithmetic, and it's not that hard. We just type into R, but we can avoid even that uh, simple step of labor. And what we're going to do is use this idea that we've covered in a previous walkthrough of creating objects. Okay, So I'm going to take this command that makes my table of counts. And instead of just printing out the result to the console, I'm going to store that in an object called T1. So I'll put my uh, cursor here on line 23, hit command enter to execute, and now I've got a table called T1. And if I come down here in the console and I just type in T1, hey, there's my table of counts that I had from the previous command. What I'll do now is I will pass this T1 object 
into another R function that is called prop.table. And prop.table, well, it takes a table of counts and it turns it into a table of proportions. Hence, prop for proportion, table for table, prop.table. Let's see what happens. I hit put my line, my cursor on that line, I hit command enter. And now, instead of something that sums to 1,200, I guess 1,238, the number of bands in the sample, I get a table of proportions that sum to one. And in particular, I learned that about 35% of the bands played Lollapalooza and about 65% of them didn't. And that is just a direct estimate of the probability of interest. What's the probability of playing at Lollapalooza? Now, there is a more concise way to do this. You notice I did this on, on two lines here, first creating this intermediate table and storing it in T1, and then passing T1 to the prop.table function. A more concise way to do this is using what's called pipes in R. And pipes are what allow us to take multiple steps in a calculation and chain them together in one pipeline. Just like in the real world, pipelines are built by connecting pipes together. So here's how piping works. That set of symbols right there, percent, right, caret, percent, that's called the pipe operator in R. And the way to read this is kind of like and then. Whenever you see a pipe, read and then. So first we form a table of counts of the Lollapalooza variable in the ACL Fest data. And then we pass it to prop.table to turn that table of counts into a table of proportions. And if I highlight both lines, that's my pipeline, and I hit command enter, now I get exactly the same table of proportions that I got in the previous two-step process, just in a single block of code without creating this kind of intermediate computation in T1. The intermediate was just directly piped into prop.table right there. And this uh, pattern of chaining together calculations using the pipe operator is something that comes up again and again because it's very common to, need to chain calculations together in data science. And this is a very concise way of doing it. All right, let's see these ideas play out for a second question. What is now a joint probability? In this case, the joint probability that a band played both ACL and played Lollapalooza. So to answer this question, we need to cross-tabulate the data by not just one festival, but both festivals. And it's simple to do that. Cross-tab by ACL and Lollapalooza. So there you have it. I execute that command by putting my cursor on that line and hitting command enter. And now I get a table of counts of all possible combinations. So in particular, I learned that there were 77 double yeses in the data set where a band played both Lollapalooza and ACL Fest, 719 double no's. And now once I've got that table, I can actually pipe the table of counts into prop.table, turn that table of counts into a table of proportions. And the resulting numbers are just good estimates from our data of joint probabilities. So highlighting that whole block of code, and I learned that 6.2% of the bands uh, played both ACL and Lollapalooza. That's the joint probability that ACL equals one here in this row, and Lollapalooza equals one here in this column. Now there are three more examples of probability questions that you could answer using this data and various combinations of X tabs, pipes, and prop.table. It's the same three functions, just combined in slightly different ways. I will leave that to you. What I've tried to convey in this video is A, the overall workflow of R, of like getting a data set in, opening up a script, or maybe writing your own script, executing commands from that script to the console down there, and viewing the results, which so far are only tables, but eventually will include plots that'll pop up basically right where my face is on this video down here in the plots tab. We haven't gotten there yet. So that's the big part is just the overall workflow of interacting with R. And the other is just a little more micro detail of how counting can be done in R, in particular counting variables, counting combinations of variables, and how you can use those counts to estimate probabilities. For the rest of those questions, what I do is refer you to this, lesson three, counting, because it has not just what we've covered here, but much more. And it should be your one-stop shop for learning how to estimate pretty much any kind of probability on the basis of counts and X tabs in R. See you next time.